Good morning, everybody. It's a Friday morning, <laughs> and I just uh, did my prayer time on Friday, an intercession time, and uh, I usually don't like to make a video on the intercession prayer times like that. But, uh, oh, I had a bunch of little ads, notes. Of course, I, I, re I was reading uh, Joshua last night. And so, right at the end, after I finished, I had to get new pack of cigarettes. So I ran in the room. I said, you know what, let me do this right now. A few little notes, and then maybe I'll teach for a few minutes. And this, I had forgotten to write this down, and it just came to my mind. And I thought, you know, let me do this too. I know that when you see me talk about that I posted something on the World Trade Center this past year, Tower 7. And if you look at some of the little, there are different conspiracy things that go around. But then there are some things that I see that I feel, you know, this is, this looks like it's a problem. And when I did the Tower 7 video and talked about it, it just simply, that was the third building on the day of the uh, tragedy of 9-11, terrorist attacks, where I grew up and where I walk and everything in that area. And that Tower 7 simply looked like that building was was demolished, or it was a demolition with explosives. And the reason, and then after I seen it and listened to it, I also would see some news articles uh, sort of like refuting the people that believed that building was a demolition, meaning somebody might have not only hit planes, hit the two famous towers, the tall World Trade Towers, but that maybe there was uh, bombs that brought down that Tower 7. And if you look at the video, if you simply Google collapse of, the first thing that comes up on your Google search is Tower 7. So a lot of people began believing that there was more to it and there simply needed to be a reinvestigation. Well, I watched about a month ago on the Smithsonian History Channel, which I get on my TV. It's on demand, you watch whatever you want. And it was about a two minute short uh, thing on uh, the world, the 9-11, okay? And it was obviously from the Smithsonian Channel, it's not gonna be a conspiratorial thing. I was upset when I was done watching that because what it had was two it, the short clip was this. It said there were 118 firefighters who insist that there were explosives that went off on the day of 9-11. So these firefighters insist that there were not just explosions that you might have at like a regular fire, which I've had, whether there's propane tanks in a house or, you know, it, those are normal things sometimes can they go off you know and you but these firefighters the 118 of them the Smithsonian said uh, insist that they heard explosions like bombs detonations okay and then it had a scenario this history program said there were these two uh, scientists that came up with the theory and the scientists' theory were, when the planes hit the towers, planes have aluminum in them. Okay, I understand this. And aluminum could become explosive when it reaches a certain temperature and if you put water on it. There are car fires. I know this from the fire department. If you have a, an engine block, so we used to go up to car fires. We got very comfortable. I used to go up to car fires just with the hose and not even put my bunker gear on or helmet and I don't know if it was but I remember one time there was one by the King Ranch and me and my friend Joe went up there and you know I was had a lot of years there so I didn't worry too much about walking up to a car fire because normally there's no explosions normally so I just walk up like just with the t-shirt and the, the fire department t-shirt we had on and then the bunker pants but that was a violation of protocol, but I used to do that. I remember I did that one day at that one fire, 
I might have had the jacket on, but no helmet or nothing. Sure enough, uh, one of the it had a propane tank in the truck that was on fire, and it blew. And I didn't, you know, panic. But if you know, if it hit me, I would have been dead. So then I walked back to the truck and said, "Joe, I think I'm going to put my helmet on." But if you have a magnesium engine block, okay, and not steel. You don't put water on those because, yes, the same concept of what I'm talking about. If you add water to something that's magnesium or aluminum at a certain, you know, temperature, it's explosive. And these two scientists on this Smithsonian History Channel, their theory was the aluminum from these planes melted throughout the building. And when the temperature reached a certain temperature, they exploded. And that's what the firefighters were hearing. I was mad because that was a defense to try to debunk the testimony of those firemen. Because there's no way that the aluminum in planes would be able to melt like that in such tall steel concrete structures as the World Trade Towers, and then to explode in such a manner that it would cause the, a type of a demolition collapse like we saw. And that convinced me more than any other conspiracy sites that there's something there, okay? Because they went all the way out of their way because they, um, maybe they recognized that there were enough people in the population that doubt the official record. And the numbers are very high. It's almost like, you know, maybe half of the people that are Hold on this, think that the official record of what happened is not correct. They need to investigate more. And when I saw that, it just showed me that's like a media manipulation. Last night, I'll mention this when I saw him in this, the date of this video, the campaign of the uh, presidential campaign, the next big thing coming up is New York. New York State, but New York City is the big you know, place where they're campaigning. And Bernie Sanders... Socialists on the Democratic side, who's given Hillary Clinton a run for her money, run for her life, whatever. He started coming out in the last few days and saying, Hillary Clinton is not qualified to be president. Okay, not a big thing, but he was kind of strong on that because of the money she takes from Wall Street. And all. So on the world news, Scott Pelley uh, had, which is uh, Channel 10 News, which is a CBS News here where I live. World News Tonight, CBS, comes on here at 5.30 in the East Coast, uh, 6.30. And I haven't been watching the World News for years on a regular basis like that, only the last few months. And the, the bias is so obvious, it gets me upset. And they had Bernie Sanders on. And Scott Pelley's interview with Bernie, uh, Charlie Rose was filling in. And Charlie Rose's interview with Bernie Sanders was like this. He said... Recently, Bernie, you've been going after Miss Clinton's qualifications. And he said, the Republicans, we understand that they are, you know, so crazy. And, you know, all of the country, basically, I'm paraphrasing, all the country recognizes Republicans are nuts and Trumps and all this stuff. But Mr. Sanders, certainly... You don't believe that Mrs. Clinton is actually unqualified. After all, she is so well qualified. Now, is this news? Or is this a political thing? And then Sanders said, no, I'm sticking to my guns. You know, she's unqualified. Then Charlie Rose actually put in the mouth of Bernie Sanders. He said, well, would this be acceptable? And Charlie Rose actually says... If this were you saying it, Bernie, this is news. Well, I think Miss Clinton is actually qualified. This is Charlie Rose talking, sort of mimicking Sanders. Would you say something like this, Mr. Sanders? I think Miss Clinton is actually qualified to be president. And maybe I got a little upset the last few days. But we're really not like those Republicans. And we're really much above this. And I, we just, we're really much better and... And then Charlie Rose finished his little fake apology, putting those words into Sanders' mouth on World News Tonight. 
and then saying, could you maybe say that that's acceptable? The whole thing was such a sh uh, sham because do, do you have Trump on, Cruz on, Kasich on, or do you have any of those guys on saying, well, and then on the other channel, the top world news was Donald Trump's daughter has some garment business and her scarves were recalled because they were imported from China. World news, Donald Trump's, so the media is going out of its way to, to you know, do everything else. And then when it came to Sanders and Clinton, almost like saying in Charlie Rose, the world news tonight, saying we're really not that bad. And you got to admit that Miss Clinton is so highly qualified. I don't think she's qualified either. I agree with Sanders. So that upsets me to see all that. I just want to mention those. There's a couple of news cases that recently came out. Uh, the trial postponed. And look, we have a lot of problems here in this. The things I've read and told you guys about DA cases and all. But this was a case I mentioned. This kid's name is uh, Gaetan, if you see it. But I mentioned this case. There were two kids tragically shot in a drive-by, young kids. This was a year or two ago now. And I remember this kid, Gaetan, at first, I mentioned this before, the, the father there that was at that house, they all kind of knew each other and they were involved in some type of gang thing. But the father said he didn't know who shot uh, drove by and shot and then later the fall to change his testimony and I watched this in the news and then the kid during the trials uh, of Guy Town somebody stood up in another case another court said they want me to frame Guy Town and all this was so now he's in prison for life but they're going to try and get a new uh, trial for him because it, it even said in the article that there were so many problems in it. And so maybe that's, and then there was another murder conviction the court tossed out. Uh, there was a girl, Clarissa Silguero, uh, who was murdered. And in this case, I read the same type of thing where they, you know, had questionable testimony and it was appealed in a higher court just overturned another murder conviction from this county, from here in Oasis County. And it looks like they're not going to be able to retry these cases. And some of the stuff, maybe these, maybe the DA and these guys, you know, feel that, you know, we got the right guy or whatever. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe they just want to solve cases quickly. But you could see now, all of these murder convictions are getting overturned. And that's not good. That's not good. That's where you got to go by the rules. Uh... And then, let me see, I think I hit most of the notes. Last night I read Joshua, chapter 24. I wanted to review it again before I talked about it, but I'm going to do this now. And I noticed at the end of my, uh, in my Bible, and this is a fairly newer one, if I had the ones I used over the years, I always would have notes. But as I ended the book of Joshua last night, in my Bible I had the notes, uh, the three things that I picked up from Joshua that were significant. I wrote them down a while ago, I guess. One was what I already discussed this last few months on the cities of refuge. We read about those cities of refuge. There were places where the manslayer, people that would basically be guilty of manslaughter, unintentionally killing people back in biblical days, they go to the city of refuge. They find refuge. And the high priest of the nation of Israel while he was alive, that manslayer had to stay in that city of refuge. He could not go back to his own uh, inheritance until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, he was released from being, in a sense, in that city of refuge, almost like a prison sentence because he had to stay in another town. But the death of the high priest, he could go back to his inheritance. But if he left too soon, the uh, revenger, avenger of blood would get him. And that was a type of Christ. Because we as people are guilty of sin, which is really what killed Christ on the cross. He died for our sins. So we were all like the manslayer. And it was the death of the high priest, Jesus, 
that allowed us to be free, to go into the inheritance. That we read in Joshua. The other thing I mentioned the other day was the uh, altar that the two and a half tribes, Gad, Reuben, and the half tribe Manasseh, set up that altar on the border of Jordan, but it was an altar of memorial and there would be no animal sacrifices made on it, which was the type of the cross. And then last night I read Joshua recalls the whole story of what God has done with them at the end of the book of Joshua, the last chapter, and he, they testify God has done these great things and Joshua sets up this stone under an oak tree by the altar, by the sanctuary, and it says, this stone is a witness. It has heard all of these words this day. The stone heard all of these words this day. You know, Jesus is, is the rock. He's the stone. It says of Christ in Psalms, the stone that the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, and this is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. And Jesus said, I only speak the words that I've heard from the Father. I only do the works that I've seen from the Father. So that stone of witness, Joshua said, it has heard all of our words. It, it, it's listened. And Jesus' ministry was being attentive to the voice of the Father and doing only the things that the Father had said, speaking only the words that the Father had given him. And that's important. It says about Moses in the Ark of the Covenant, put the words that I have given you into this box. The ark was the box that held the Ten Commandments. And God said, I've entrusted to you, Moses, this calling. You're going to lead the people. He was like an apostle, Moses, that type of a figure. He's called a prophet, actually, in uh, the New Testament. The Lord your God will raise up a prophet like unto me. That, Mo that was Moses saying that, quoted in the book of Acts. And him you will hear. And Peter says, and that was Christ. That was Christ. The prophet, like Moses. How? Uh, I could teach a whole thing. Moses was a great deliverer. Moses was the receiver. The, me the mediator of the law, the first covenant. He did these supernatural miracles. Delivering him. Delivering the people of God. Stood up against Pharaoh. More miracles. A lot of times we think sort of like the Bible is full of miracles. There are miracles in Scripture, but the two most highly concentrated times of miracles were in the, life, in the story of Moses and in the Gospels, the life of Christ. Those are the concentrations of more miracles taking place. So Moses was a type of Christ. And God, and he said, God said to Moses, only put the words that I give to you. Those are the ones that are going to go into the ark. Those are the ones you're going to communicate. So I want you to see just those. I figured I would throw those two notes out, being I'm already discussing. I looked for one last uh, ad, news ad, because I've got a bunch of newspapers. I read the paper every day. I couldn't find it, but this past week, another death row case came up. And the man's name was Vasquez. He was going to be executed Wednesday. And I began praying for Vasquez. And I read his case. Terrible case. I think it was down close to the border, but it was in the U.S. here in Texas. And so many years ago, they were out, I guess, getting high, him and two younger kids. And he killed a 12-year-old boy. And he, the night of his confession to the cops, he also admitted that he heard voices that told him to kill that boy. And he held the boy's body up and he drank the boy's blood. Now, I would think if it was maybe a case where s some girl was raped or something, and then maybe somebody said something like that, it would be a lie because the person's preparing for an insanity defense, but he really just wanted to commit a crime. But when I read this one, I didn't think it was a lie because it was just a 12-year-old boy that was along with him, no sexual abuse there, and I forget if it was maybe a relative, a nephew or something. And immediately, the night of the murder, he confessed, and he said, I heard voices. Now, they were getting high on something. And so, I, I think it was true. I think 
he told the truth in the sense that whatever drug he did might have opened him up. This could be those cases, and I don't think they're, I think they're rare to say somebody might have been demon-possessed for a few moments. I don't think that those cases are as predominant as some of the spiritual warfare teachings in Christianity talk about. But there are cases where I think, yes, what this person did, and as I read the article, it said there were questions whether it was a satanic cult thing and during the trial and all. And they executed him, and I read his final statement. He's 30-something. His name is Vasquez. He was just put to death, rightfully so, for that crime. And as he was put to death, I wanted to read it, but I didn't find it just now. He looked at his family. He said, I've repented. I'm going to go be with God. It was a good statement. Then he looked at the victim's family, and he apologized, and he said, he said, this is the only way I can be forgiven. He said, for me to be put to death. And he said to those victims' family, he said, and here is your peace. He said, I, gi I give this to you so you could have peace. And I accept this execution to do what is right so you don't have to be the victims' family so you could feel peace. And I thought that was a good statement. And that's why I pray for those cases that they would end well as best as they can, considering what happened in those cases. And I like that one. That was a good one. So today, uh, <coughs> that's it. I just wanted you to, wanted to communicate that stone of witness scripture. I'll add it on to this one. Oh, and I also read, I forgot, it's in Luke 12, and it's in where Jesus, I'll share this, being I got the camera on. I like this. Jesus said in Luke 12, 36. I'll read a few verses. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And you yourselves like unto them that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. He's talking about his coming. Blessed are those who are waiting. Blessed are the disciples, the followers, that are waiting. Because if you wait it out, you're going to have this experience where the Master will come back from the wedding, Jesus, uh, the bride, and and he, what will he do? He will serve. He'll put on a servant's garment and he will serve. And do you know, not too long after that, Jesus surprised them at the Last Supper. And he put on a garment, like a servant, a servant's garment. And he served them. And you know, the kingdom of God is obviously futuristic uh, fulfillment of that. But there were disciples and people that left. They followed for so long, and then certain things would happen. Jesus would make certain statements, and some would go away. And Jesus would say to his disciples, Are you going to leave too? And Peter would say, Where will we go? Because you have the words of eternal life. So in a sense, that scripture was also fulfilled at, at that time. Because the ones that stayed to the end, they got the chance to see Jesus give them that example. He that is least in the kingdom is greater than John. Jesus showed that. Jesus did that. And he died on the cross and rose again the third day in fulfillment of the scriptures. So I'm going to pray for you guys. Father, I thank you for all of our friends, all of our community. I pray that you bless each one. I pray that the kingdom of God will expand like I was just praying a little while ago. That in every nation, it says in Revelation, the angel went forth with the everlasting gospel. And God, we are also messengers. The same word for angel and messenger. And it's also used about us. It says in scripture, your angels, well, they're ministering spirits, flames of fire. It says about Jesus. 
His eyes are like a flame of fire. They stood upon the sea of glass, mingled with fire. They overcame the beast and its image. I pray you bless all of our people. I pray that the Holy Spirit would come on each one and your will would be done. Amen.